One of the main themes in Tupac's life was the lack of having a father, which he mentioned in numerous interviews and songs. So in this video, let's do a deep dive on the actual father figures in his life and break down the full timelines to better understand what he actually went through and who played a major role in Tupac's life. To start, we need to go all the way back to 1968. For transparency, the world is still grieving from the recent assassination of Martin Luther King. To further understand the tension in America, there was over 115 documented murders from 1952 to 1968 of those innocent fighting in the civil rights movement. Tupac's mother, Afeni Shakur, who was celebrating just being married to one of the Black Panther leaders, Lumumba Shakur and a polygamous marriage becoming his second wife with Lumumba already having a wife and kids. Though it wasn't the traditional marriage, the couple were madly in love. Lumumba was a powerful Black Panther leader with devoted followers holding high positions in the Harlem, New York headquarters. He came from a lineage of strong men within the community like his father, Saladin Shakur, who Afeni, a young girl lost in a world looking for a purpose in life, was intrigued by the power and strength the Shakur family had. Their influence and leadership was so impactful that a lot of their followers, men and women, changed their names to Shakur, including his adopted stepbrother, Matulu. Afeni looked at as a young, passionate and articulate woman who gained respect from other members, with Lumumba's position placed her in even higher regards amongst her peers. The two together sought to uplift and resolve any conflicts in the community, protecting and defending any injustices, even training political education to new Black Panther members. Unfortunately, instead of celebrating being married for nine months, they both were arrested. The FBI accused them and 19 other Black Panther members with conspiracy to murder and bomb several places in New York City, including the Town Hall. All 21 were placed with a $100,000 bail. The group didn't have enough funds, though loved ones, including Afeni's sister Glow, tried to gather enough money to post a bail with no luck until local church members and communities put together enough to bail out two members. And one of the members all of them decided to bail out was Afeni Shakur. Partly because she was a woman, but also because she was educated and articulate, viewed as a good representation to put out first. And they both were placed with the responsibility to gain enough money to eventually bail out the rest. Finding out they were facing 350 years in prison, they were fearful of the often unjust system. Everyone decided to go with the law office of Gerald Lefcourt, who was a new up-and-coming attorney having just graduated the year prior. He would represent the men and assigned his sister Carol, who just recently graduated law, to represent the women. The only problem is, Afeni wasn't comfortable putting her life in the hands of someone more green or fresh. Felt she wouldn't be able to represent the emotion of their struggle, saying she had a tiny squeaky voice that wouldn't command respect in court. Afeni stated to a local news reporter, I'm facing the same 350 years everyone else is facing, and I am not going out like that. With this here, Carol left court. Speaking for me, sh Afeni instead chose to represent herself in court. Immediately creating a rift with the other members, to her surprise, even her husband, Lamumba, who voiced his disappointment at his wife. He tried to change her mind, even mocking her, saying she was too emotional and not educated or qualified, that she would f everything up. Though understanding her husband's fears, Afeni sympathized but was heartbroken about what she now knew he felt about her, causing an irreparable divide that grew bigger as the trial started. She became even more frustrated feeling Lumumba was trying to control her and dictate her decisions while behind bars, still attending every possible rally she could to gain money to support their defense and to bail out members. The times were really stressful. Afeni found some solace in friendships with fellow Panther members and community activists, including Billy Garland who was also a ranked member of the New Jersey Black Panthers. He was known to provide transportation for a lot of members as well. They developed a close friendship working together, and at this time, if you were a Black Panther member, you faced false allegations with arrest, being racially profiled, and to some extremes, even murdered. Every member was feeling this pressure, and as if all of their days were numbered. With the stress of the world on their shoulders, Afeni facing life in prison, including a strain between her husband, calls for a perfect short love affection between the two. A love affair resulting in Afeni becoming pregnant. Afeni always thought she couldn't get pregnant since she was never on birth control in her past relationships and felt devastated by the news. Scared to bring a child into this world, 
she decided to get an abortion. Deep down, Afeni felt she would be found guilty. Coming to grips with the thought of spending the rest of her life behind bars, last minute, she changed her mind and decided to keep the baby. Seeing it as a part of her that could still be free in the world while she would be locked away forever. When Billy found out, he was excited and he would pick up Afeni for dates and drop her off to her court appearances. While pregnant, facing guilt and shame of adultery, Afeni still went through trial representing herself and at eight months pregnant, she gave her final powerful closing argument. After two years of legal proceedings on May 12, 1971, they were acquitted and found not guilty of all charges, with the place immediately erupting in a celebration by everyone's surprise. Shortly after, on June 16, 1971, she gave birth to her baby boy. Since acquitted, she feared the government would want revenge, so she didn't want her son to have the last name Shakur, instead naming him Lassane Parrish Crooks. Lassane after Afeni's sister, Parrish's surname, and Crooks after Carol Crooks, who was a close partner to Afeni at the time, even providing her a place to live with a nursery for her baby, whose name would actually change a few times. First to Paki, then almost a year later, she changed it for the final time to Tupac Amaru. Shakur, named after a Peruvian chief who led the largest indigenous uprising in Spanish-American colonial history. The celebration and good times were short-lived for Afeni. Understanding the baby wasn't his, Lumumba and Afeni both decided to get a divorce. Billy, Tupac's biological father, did show up a few times to see Afeni and the baby. Having already several kids of his own, even took Tupac to meet his siblings. But unfortunately, this was short-lived with Billy having met his own struggles in life. Being a Black Panther member himself and coming to grips with his own office in Jersey being dismantled, coupled with tough times, he was to never stop by again, completely losing contact with Afeni. To make matters worse, she was struggling financially, and it's now 1974, still in the fight, Afeni was working in the South Bronx with a malpractice office representing tenants who were getting illegally mistreated, such as unlawful evictions. She would leave Tupac with family members like her sister Glow. Still in the Panthers movement, she crossed paths a lot with Matulu Shakur, who was a known acupuncturist in the communities. Feeling sympathy and already having a deep affection for Afeni, Matulu Shakur was happy to step into her life as a high-ranking member himself started to become more popular amongst the party. Having several kids of his own, including a four-year-old son, who he would grow to know as rapper, Mopreen. Motula took a liking to Tupac stepping up as his father figure, helping to mentor him as Afeni's Black Panther Prince at four years old. Falling in love, they immediately got married, leading to the birth of their daughter, Setua Shakur, on October 3rd, 1975. The newlyweds continued fighting against the injustices in the black communities, but unfortunately, things took a turn for the worse when it was brought to Matulu's attention that there was a warrant out for his arrest. He was facing charges for several robberies and also his participation in breaking Asada Shakur out of prison. Asada Shakur was Tupac's godmother and a well-known leader in the communities at the time. She was in prison, but a group of black activists developed an escape plan breaking her out of jail, and Asada soon after found asylum in Cuba. Understanding he will be facing life in prison, Matulu decided to not turn himself in. Instead, went on the run, resulting in him being placed on FBI's most wanted list. Afeni, knowing she would be on her own again, this time with two kids. Though they both had love for each other, they divorced in 1982. It became regular for the federal agents or cops to stop by for questions, even interviewing Tupac while at school. Falling on even harder times on top of constant pressure from the police, Afeni fell into the arms of a successful local drug dealer, Kenneth Saunders, with a street name, Legs, who would also be seen supporting the Black Panther movement on occasions as well. He took a liking to Tupac, who even considered Legs as a father figure. Though Afeni didn't support his drug dealing lifestyle, she needed the income he provided her, relieving her of a lot of financial stress as a single mother. And at this time, the crack epidemic hits New York hard. Legs already in the drug business had his own addictions as well, which unfortunately Afeni picked up, both becoming an addict of using crack. 
It's now 1984, Tupac is 13 years old, still living in New York. The Black Panthers have been dismantled successfully by the government. It took a heavy toll on its members. With most leaders gone, many faced a bleak future. Some went on the ground or fled the country to avoid prosecution, leaving behind their families and loved ones. Others were incarcerated, facing harsh sentences that left lasting scars on their lives. The remaining members that stayed behind were left to pick up the pieces, many developing PTSD or bad addictions, with drugs as their vice. Things have gotten even worse for Afini as legs would become abusive and would constantly push drug use on her. It was crippling and her passion to fight against injustice was replaced with depression and pain, leaving Afini dependent on the drugs and money from legs. Leg still had an influence over Tupac as well, teaching him the way of the streets and how to manage a life as a drug dealer. On one particular evening, Lex gets arrested and is sentenced to serve prison time. Afini struggled trying to support her family since her high profile name made it difficult to keep a job, also still being harassed by the local police. Fed up with how bad her life had fallen, Afini looking to start over and raise her kids out of the spotlight, found a nice public housing community moving her family to Baltimore, Maryland. Now back in New York, Legs now released from prison, went back into the streets as a drug dealer, and he returned to Afini's place realizing she was no longer living there. Unfortunately, still as a user, and at the age of 41, Legs died by a crack-induced heart attack. When the news got back to Afini and Tupac, they both were devastated. Tupac took his death really hard, understanding as a man how important it was to have a father figure. And at this time, Matula has been captured and arrested, facing a long prison bid. Even Lumumba, who is now living in New Orleans, had two people break into his house and murder him. And Afini, having not heard from Billy since Tupac was four, considered him as a non-existent, so didn't bother bringing him up to Tupac. And with all of Tupac's past possible father figures either being dead or in jail, Tupac had come to grips that he will never have that father figure he knew he needed and instead had to become the man of his own house, accepting his father figures was either dead or gone now. And at this point, Lex was considered his only real father, even confirmed by Afini. Tupac became more mad at the world than the men in his life, feeling as if they were strangers anyways, with no one really stepping up to be the father that a young man needed. It forced him to find traits in the men he crossed paths with in the neighborhoods, from the pimps, drug dealers, gangsters, and any other man he felt he could pick up some game from. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Afini didn't bother to bring up his biological father, Billy, who was still alive, since she hasn't heard from him and it's possible that she wanted to protect her son from any further disappointments after all he's already been through. Now, should Afini have decided to tell him anyways? We'll leave that up to you. Thank you for watching the video, and if you would like to know Tupac's life in Baltimore, make sure to watch these two videos. And also, make sure to like and subscribe for more.